What's going on everybody and welcome back to the ACSA team reveals here on Maximum Football 2020. This is John Jay Gaming on the mic and today we are here in part 8 of the ACSA team reveal series. Where we'll go over all of the teams in the Midwest Conference today. The Midwest of course being the Maximum Football equivalent of the MAC. It's going to be a good one, so make sure you smash that like button as well as hit subscribe if you do happen to be new. On the other hand as well, if you haven't seen the previous parts, please go check that out as well to introduce yourself to the rest of the teams in this ACSA series. That will be linked down in the description as well as in the end card that we'll be playing at the end of this video. But without further ado, let's go ahead and check out the teams that make up the Midwest Conference. We are going to be revealing is the Brandon University Bears, making home to, to very cold and windy Brandon, South Dakota. They're going to be rocking the brown and black, true to the colors of your natural born Bears. This is also what their jerseys are going to be looking like this upcoming season, as this is what they will be rocking for the home jerseys for the Brandon Bears as well as what they're going to be wearing on the road as well you know as they uh, play here in this ACS series as well as a nice close up look for the Brandon Bears helmet with a full brown helmet and of course can't forget that about that bear logo as well even though Brandon is a you know group of five team they have some good players on this squad most notably is Case Brown and Demir Ace are both seniors on this squad that look to make a difference out there on the football field. Look for them to be pretty successful with these two guys. Other guys to note is Johnny Ford, who will be the successor at the running back position to Case Brown. And then also senior Josh Alford and senior quarterback Samson Oliver. This is going to be an offensive-oriented team for sure that does have plenty of experience towards the top. Look for them to stay composed in those late-game situations as they play within the Midwest Conference. We have the Brooklyn University Wolves, hailing from Brooklyn, New York, keeping it in the boroughs of New York City for this team as they're gonna be donning the black and purple, as well as replacing the East Detroit Hawks over the course of this series here on Maximum Football 2020. This is also what the Brooklyn Wolves are gonna be taking the field with as these are the home jerseys for Brooklyn University for this upcoming season as well as when they're going to be rocking on the road, traveling outside of the safe boroughs of New York City during the course of this dynasty, as well as an up-close look at that helmet as well. Got the all-purple helmet with the white face mask and that wolf logo, of course. Unfortunately for them, though, this team is going to straight up have a hard time. However, it seems like they would be inclined to run the, or not run the ball, to pass the ball quite a bit as they have Jamie Willis who does have a decent arm and decent mobility he's gonna have to really put the team on his back though as there's a weapons Jake Weber Vance Hicks and Jerron Donnelly who all have promise but they need to grow quickly same thing with Demarius Morgan you know who really hasn't shown much the first two season he really needs to break out in order for Brooklyn to have a, a great season Meanwhile, on the defensive end, the only two players really of note is Deion Davis and Jamie, Jamie Branch. Not a lot of talent on this roster, man, though. Other than that, they're not very fast, to be honest, for defensive backs. Look for them to struggle over the course of this season. Back to South Dakota, where we find the Central Tech Falcons playing here in the streets of South Dakota. They're going to be wrong in the orange, black, and white over the course of this dynasty as the Falcons will be replacing the North Chicago Wolfpack over the course of this series. In addition, this is what the home jerseys are going to be looking like for Central Tech this upcoming season as they are, of course, rocking that orange and black for the most part, as well as what they're wearing whenever they go on the road outside of Seahawks Falls, South Dakota for this upcoming season. And an up-close look, of course, of the Central Tech helmet in season one of the ACSA. This team is led by senior quarterback Justin Hodgins, who does have, you know, does a really good job of, you know, at least being accurate and does a decent job of reading the defense too. Also carries nice mobility for a quarterback as well, which you love to see, and he has weapons to work with as well. Two of which are TJ Madefield and Dwayne Loya. 
both of which are, you know, guys that, you know, aren't necessarily the biggest, but they can make plays when they get into open space. However, it seems like the line play might be the best thing that they have to offer, though, as a unit. They have Belial Diaz, who is the senior captain on the offensive line, but they also have guys like Quentin Ward, JC Banks, and Mike Gil Galley, you know, doing what they can to really control the trenches. On the defensive end, they have a linebacking core and Raven Smith and Jared Weaver, with guys like Chris Frett and Jelaine Stewart trying to push things around on the defensive side of the trenches. Look for them to be the type of team to establish themselves on the ground, but then open things up with those dangerous weapons in the Midwest Conference later on in football games. To South, or excuse me, um, North Dakota now, we go to Fargo, where the North Dakota State Bison used to be, but now we have the Dakota A&M Gophers. Rockin' the yellow and blue and replacing the New York West Steers over the course of this dynasty. Dakota A&M is going to be rocking the blue and yellow and this is what their home jerseys are going to be looking like over the course of this season as well as what they wear on the road as well as with the ma standard mandated white jerseys for the road team. And for some reason they're like at sign like an A&M is blue. Not sure why it's like that. That might be a glitch but hey. It is what it is though as we take a look at the helmet real fast before we check out what kind of talent is on that Dakota A&M roster. Speaking of the roster though, this is what they have to work, work with. Look for running back duo Joey Smith and Jonathan Helmer to each get plenty of carries in the backfield as they uh, look to be the most dangerous weapons on this Dakota A&M team overall. Other guys to watch out for is tight end Vince Beverly who has good speed within the Midwest Conference and can, you know, has decent catching as well. Look for him to get into open space when possible. Uh, they also have offensive linemen like Jermaine Marby, Deshaun Lewis, and Josh Hart, who all have potential to really do something. But their linebacker core, however, may be the best they have. As Ellen and Bird, Leonard Moose, Justin Smith, and Devontae Snow are all guys that can for sure play Look for them to be the best unit on this Dakota A&M team this year. Up next, we are here in Wisconsin now as we find the Eastern Wisconsin at Port Washington Hunters representing Port Washington in the state of Wisconsin. They're going to be donning the brown and yellow and replacing the North Cincinnati Pandas during this Maximum Football Series. In addition, this is what their uniforms are going to look like, and I love the font that they use here. You know, definitely a different look, trying to show more sophistication than maybe what they actually have. You know, they're definitely an up north team, you know, not about, uh, you know, that flash and style. They're more about that grit and grind, you know, in the big, you know, the norm northern part of the United States. Wow, that was really hard to say. I can't believe I struggled <laughs> with that one. Well, let's check out the, the roster for Port Washington. So this is what Port Washington will be deploying, and there's a few guys to keep an eye on. Most of which is Justin Antoine and Jordan Dazer, both who are very experienced players on this football team. Look for them to really make a difference, you know, for these guys as impact players. Over on the defense, we have lineman Derek Hoker and Kendrick Houston, each, uh, you know, doing their thing to try to move the defensive line. As well as quarterback Nivelle Nall, who doesn't really have the mobility, but does have a serviceable arm, you know, to at least get, get it out to his targets. You know, if this really screams average within the Midwest, I would not be shocked if he finished in like a 6-6, six 5-7, six, maybe even 7-5 kind of season. After that, the next team that we have on this list is the Kearney College Elks. Colin Kearney, Nebraska, and the great state of Nebraska home. They are going to be rocking the silver and blue in this dynasty and are replacing the Michigan Coast Explorers over the course of this series. Now what Kearney College has is they have some pretty cool uniforms, man. I'll tell you what, they're going to be rocking the gray and blue and I love how these two colors complement each other on both the home uniforms as well as on the away jerseys. This might be my favorite uniform set in the entirety of the Midwest Conference. Followed by a quick look at the helmet real quick. Gotta have the elk on each side. Gray helmet with a blue stripe. You love to see how these uniforms turned out. As for this football team, look for them to do some two tight end sets this upcoming season. 
Tan Shoot and Dion Oshawa are both guys that you know didn't really differentiate themselves in spring camp but they can both play so expect to see both of them on the field you know quite a bit you know over the course of his season of course we can't talk about Kearney College however without talking about Dylan Bays and Derek Antoine these two look to make a quite dynamic duo out there on the field it will be a successful year for these guys if these two can connect pretty often other guys to watch out for is Graham Banks, who is the best defensive player on the Kearney College football team, as well as linebacker Javon Landgreer and Damian Howard, both guys that can certainly play within the Midwest Conference, but if they're going to get some non-conference wins, these guys are definitely going to have to step up in order for them to have a legitimate chance of pulling the upsets. Sort of keeping it in that part of the country, we have the Minnesota State Twin City Beavers. Located in Minneapolis, Minnesota, home of the capital of Minnesota, matter of fact. They're going to be rocking the red and green, unlike many teams that are spotting the Beavers team name in this dynasty and are going to be replacing the Middle Michigan Aztecs over the course of this series. Now, with that being said, this is actually what the uniforms are going to be looking like for the Beavers of Minnesota State in the Twin Cities. They got the red and green for the home jerseys, and then you see... You know, a much different away jersey set that they are going to be rock, rocking and rolling with as this is what they'll have for uh, for the Beavers of Minnesota State in the Twin Cities, of course. As well as an up-close logo of the Beavers that are on this helmet as well as you know the rest of the features that you'll expect to see during Season 1 of the ACSA. Meanwhile, this is the roster for Twin Cities and this is a pretty nice squad for the Midwest. Kiko and Notwe is going to have a few weapons to throw to, including Deion Jennings, Jabril Wally, and Ryan Wills, who's a true freshman, and having two other veteran wide receivers on this roster is going to really help his development for sure. Over on the defensive end, you have defensive back Clayton Brown, defensive lineman Sean White, and then fellow defensive lineman DJ Whitford, who, for the most part, there aren't the most talented guys in the world. You know, maybe DJ Whitford is going to have some really good upside. But the other two guys do bring really valuable leadership. And I look for that to play a part in this ACSA series. Up next, we now have a, you know, John Jay Gaming Delicacies. This is a team that I actually personally made because there needed to be a team in Idaho. They are the South Idaho State Ranchers located in Twin Falls, Idaho. You know, they're going to be rocking the yellow and black and will be replacing the Lake Erie State Evil Rabbits over the course of this series. This is also what the South Out Idaho State uniforms are going to be looking like this season. They also have white included in their colors as well. You know, got to have some white thrown up in there as well as what the away jerseys are going to be looking like, you know, when they go on the road outside of the state for of Virginia since that will be guaranteed for sure because they don't have any other, you know, ACF teams to play within the state of Idaho. It's all of them. They are the pride of Idaho in this series, as well as an up-close picture of the helmets that South Idaho State will be bearing during the course of this series. Unlike many Idaho college football teams, though, this team definitely has some talent. They got sophomore running back Deron Graves, who has good strength within the Midwest, and you know, look for him to really be a difference maker, especially because his offensive line, he has guys like Randall Spencer, David Church, and Russell Cole, who both have experience, so look for them to push the line. They do also have a young quarterback in Aaron Butcher, who has decent mobility and an above average arm. Look for him to throw to guys like Jeremy Griffin, Julio Campbell and Marvin Scraps. The bad news though is that they don't really have much talent on defense. Demonte Dames and Cooper Palma are the only guys above 70 overall. The rest of the team on defense needs to develop, otherwise they're going to be involved in a lot of shootouts this season. And I don't know if they can win many of them, you know. So that's just something to keep an eye on. Everyone back to the other side of the country. We have the Rochester University Enigmas in Rochester, New York. They're going to be rocking the red and yellow and will be replacing the Kent Bobcats during the course of this series. This is also what the Enigmas will be wearing over the course of his jersey. I had no idea what an Enigma was, so, you know, just went with something random. Still looks pretty cool. 
Let me know what you think about the Ronchester logo and down in the comments if you want to do that. But that's what their home jerseys are going to look like as well as what they're rocking on the road with an up club picture of the helmet as well as the logos that will represent them within maximum football. Of course, you know, always have to remind you that, you know, if they are actually playing, you'll see a custom logo as is standard for all 130 teams within the ACSA. Now, unfortunately, there isn't a lot of talent on this team, but there is a few guys that I do want to highlight. There's a running back combo in Blake Panky and Jacob Simpson. You know, if that could make a decent one-two punch, wouldn't be surprised if they ran the ball often given their best weapon is a tight end in Brian Parker, who doesn't have the best hands but does have solid blocking abilities, particularly, you know, with this quarterback being a true freshman, you know, probably want to bring him along slowly. I'm sure this will be a run-heavy football team this upcoming season. Even worse, their best defensive player is only a 66 overall. It's Chad Pullum, and uh, he's not that great, um, particularly if you need him to be your best defensive player. Uh, they might have the worst defense in the Midwest, so just from that, it could be a long season for them. Keeping it in that part of the country, we now have the Traytown University Lions located in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, representing for the city of Brevoli Love. We're going to be rocking the red and black, and no surprises here. Got the Lions logo for both as a custom thumbnail, and also, you know, represented within the Maximum Football Dynasty. They're also going to be replacing the Cleveland Stags in this series. In addition, this is what their home uniforms that they are going to be sporting over the course of this season. Definitely love how those uniforms for sure turned out, you know, for this season. As well as what their away jerseys are going to be rocket with, you know, over at Trey Town University, home of the Lions. As well as a one final look of the helmets that they will be sporting during season one of this upcoming ACSA season. Unfortunately, as much as I like their uniforms, this might be one of the worst teams in the Midwest. I'm not going to lie. They do have two okay players in Daquan Williams and Richard Stanley. You know, that could be a decent, you know, combination to work with. But, you know, you don't want them to be your best players. And, you know, it, it's just not a lot of talent to go along. They're going to really have to focus on recruiting in these future seasons in order to get up to speed with the rest of the teams within this conference. Are here in Wisconsin once again where we have the University of Wisconsin Kennesaw Comets rocking the green and orange for this series. You know, part of the Wisconsin school system or public colleges system that they have going on up there in the great state of Wisconsin. And they will be replacing the orange rampage over the course of did I say orange? I mean the Ohio Rampage. I don't know where I just came up with that. But anyways, this is what their uniforms are going to look like. You know, definitely have a little bit of a Wisconsin vibe to them. You know, almost like the Green Bay Packers. You know, only exception being, you know, they wear a little bit more yellow. And they got the orange up in here. But, you know, it is what it is. And this is what they have for, you know, both the home and away jerseys. You know, here in the ACSA. You know, followed by this star that kind of looks like a comet if you use your imagination. But, of course, we got a better logo for them, you know, fully customized just for your experience. Now, they sure do have some guys on this team. Most notably is Ryan Jones, who's a senior running back. That experience and talent is going to play huge for the Kennesaw Comets. Other guys to check out is defensive back Luke Custer, as well as freshman tight end Kerry Hill who's a six foot eight big guy with decent hands. Huge red zone threat coming if I say so myself. Other guys to check out as well as defensive lineman Marquise Harrell, who's gonna be a solid defensive lineman for them. And quarterback Xavier Gill, who does bring experience and composer to this Kennesaw football team. You love to see it. And for the final team being introduced within the Midwest Conference, we have the University of Vermont Vipers that are also in Burlington, Vermont. Here in this Midwest Conference, I know it's going to be quite, you know, travel for some of these teams, but they do have the black and red and, of course, rocking the Cobra Viper, you know, kind of vibe here in the ACSA. In addition, this is what the Vermont football team is going to be rocking and rolling with for this upcoming season as they are going to be rocking the red and black for the most part, with the exception of that number. You know, just uh, like to spice things up a little bit, you know, have more than just two colors on the jerseys, of course, 
as well as an up close look of the helmet for the University of Vermont football team going into season one. Now one thing about this Vermont squad is that it's not very good. They're not as bad as some of the teams in the Midwest, but they could struggle. They do have a quarterback in Justin Smith who's, while not the most talented, you know, does have some experience. So they won't necessarily, you know, embarrass themselves as they have guys like Leon Kale, Kevin Kyler Overton, and Jordan Duke to throw to. Plus, they also have Daryl Minter in the backfield. But the thing is, you know, these guys aren't generally very fast. This is not going to be a very fast football team. You know, I wonder how that will play out in their defensive system or their offensive system, excuse me. But on the defense, they do have some hope. They have young players like Randy Bernard and Mike Harris, you know, coming on the squad. They still need to rebuild their defense, but they took a step in the right direction, bringing in some solid freshmen that will get some early playing time right away. So guys, that will wrap up today's ACSA Team Reveal Special, where we went over each custom team that will make up the Midwest Conference, which is the maximum football equivalent of the MAC in real life. Next time out for part nine, what we're gonna do is make a trip to the Big Pacific Conference, where we'll look at the teams that will make up that squad and reveal the teams that make up the maximum football equivalent of the Pac-12. So guys, if you're excited for that, do me a favor and please smash that like button as well as hit subscribe if you do happen to be new. If you also haven't checked out the previous ACSA team reveals, I encourage you to do that as well. I do have a list of that playlist, you know, linked down in the description as well as an end card waiting at the end of this video. So until then, I'll see you guys next time. I hope you all are having a wonderful day. Take care, everybody.